all the albums discussed in this video are Grogu approved. Hey everybody, this is TJR. You know, lately, I'll admit, I have been talking a lot about vinyl on this channel. And that's because over the last year or two, vinyl as a format has really kind of lit a fire of passion, uh, musically speaking, inside of me. And so I've been talking about it a lot. But I should make it very clear that I like CDs a lot too. I still buy CDs. I still think CDs are great. And if there's one thing I've noticed in the CD versus vinyl debate, unfortunately for some people it is a war, however, but within that debate, even some of the most fervent vinyl haters or dislikers, whatever you want to say, um, will grudgingly admit, yeah, okay, the packaging on vinyl does admittedly look better, but then they go, and then from there, they go into their various uh, technical uh, schematics as to why you shouldn't be enjoying listening to a vinyl record. Now, I'm not going to discuss that debate today, but I will say something. In spite of that, I have often found that CDs can have amazing packaging. Now, it's true. The size of a vinyl record, just the size of it alone, makes it impressive to look at. And this is an example of what would have been just a very standard cover, you know, uh, back in the day. Just This is uh, Etta James at last, of course, as I'm sure you've read the cover. Uh, and this is pretty standard to what a record, you know, just a real standard record cover. Nothing really unique or different about it. Though now it's kind of cool retro looking in, in retrospect, but at the time, just a standard cover. But just the size of it makes it impressive. However, though, that doesn't mean there aren't cool, artistic, and unique, exciting ways to package CD. And so today, I want to discuss some, uh, what I feel are really outstanding examples of CD packaging, many of which I think you could only do on a CD. I, you, I don't think you could do some of these with vinyl records. And so we're going to go over a few that are in my collection. Uh, once again, I want to stress this is from my collection only. So uh, if I've missed anything in your collection, please let me know. Um, at any rate though, now at the beginning of the CD era, admittedly, there wasn't a whole lot of attention to the packaging. Uh, I can remember especially with uh, CD releases of albums that were previously prior to the CD era that were released on vinyl, uh, oftentimes all you got was a single page insert uh, of the cover art Nothing of the back cover art, just a track listing. Very plain record label labeling on the CD itself. Uh, it was just very plain. But in time, that really started to change. In time, we began to see um, not only jewel cases that had, you know, that were themed across the way with as far as the artwork, where the interior would feature, you know, booklets, printing onto the CD, graphics there and um, graphics underneath here, under the CD. Uh, originally, these were all black, just black plastic. Um, eventually, we did get to the point where CDs uh, not only were jewel cased, uh, the theming and the packaging was really nice looking, but they'd even sometimes come with these little, and they still do, these little slip cases here um, as well, They're giving you extra bonus art. And this kind of became a, a, a standard thing that we saw with CDs. Not all CDs, of course, but we started to see it more. Another standard thing we started to see was digipacks, uh, which kind of had the tactile look and feel of a vinyl record, except when you opened them up, this is how it would be. You might have a room for a little booklet here. And, and of course, the CD uh, also printed and everything themed to the rest of the art. Um, this is Adrian Pierce, an album of hers called Oh Dear. Uh, this is a really cool independent artist. By the way, this last one was, of course, Randy Newman. I'm sure you read the title there. An excellent album of his entitled Harps and Angels. Um, it's also, another thing that became, and is still common right now, is CDs replicating the look and feel of a vinyl record. Uh, here is an album, uh, Stone Rollin' by Raphael Sadiq. And once this, this packaging you know, imitates the vinyl gatefold. Uh, here we have one by Ginny Lewis called Acid Tongue. And this uh, replicates 
like the single vinyl record packaging. And um, but so these are examples of vinyl package, not vinyl packaging, but CD packaging that I see a fair amount of, and uh, along with just standard jewel cases. But now we're going to show some really unique, clever, and exciting uh, ways that I've seen CDs packaged that I think are just fantastic. So we're going to start here with one by Kiss lead guitarist Ace Frehley. This album is called Anomaly. Now, just like that Randy Newman album I showed you a moment ago, it has a little slip case here. You pull it off here, and it folds out. And it folds out again. And it folds out again. And it folds out again. And underneath, we have some instructions. Instructions for what, you ask? Well, apparently, this uh, CD packaging here can be folded into a little desktop diorama. Now, I've never done this, but I have seen... Uh, examples of it on the internet, which I'll be showing you here. And also, inside, you do get like a little um, mini poster. I've seen this sort of thing on, in CDs before, but just a little mini poster uh, on the other side of the credits. There we go. Inside, we have the actual CD sitting here with a spooky artwork. And... You pull the CD out, and of course, inside of there is Ace with his Les Paul, giving you the thumbs up. I'm sure he's very glad you bought the album. And uh, anyways, but, um, but yeah, this is, I thought was very cool looking. Ace Freely's Anomaly. Next, I want to show you an album by the Drive-By Truckers. This is their album entitled The Southern Rock Opera. Now... This was the first album I ever bought by the Truckers, and it's a very uh, critically praised uh, concept album. And this one opens up, it looks when you first look at it like a, either a mini vinyl gatefold or a digipack. You open it three ways, like this. There's one CD. You open it this way, and there's the other CD. But now what I want to call attention to is here, you've got the booklet here with the lyrics and stuff and photos. And then you open this here, but look at this little guy here. See how he pops out there at you? Look at that. It's a little thing, I know. It's not like it's that big a thing, but how many albums, how many CDs do you see with that? And I'll be honest, I did later pick this one up on vinyl, and it was just a standard gatefold. Visually speaking, I thought this presentation was much more interesting. Now, I remember showing this album to a friend of mine, a musician friend, and he expressed a dislike for this kind of CD packaging. He wishes that all CDs would just be packaged in jewel cases. His reasoning is understandable. Uh, he feels this way because he says that um, if a jewel case gets cracked, it's easy to fix. But something like this is much more fragile. I see his point, but to me, the fact that it is more fragile forces you to appreciate it more forces you to take better care of it. So, two sides of a story. Now here is one by Anna Calvi. And this is a great album by her, by the way. This is just a um, uh, self-titled debut album. I'm pretty sure it's her debut. And uh, when you open this here, it looks like a standard digipack. There you go. But now, you have here what you think is maybe a booklet here, but let's open this up. It opens like this and it opens like this. And we have this kind of tableau here. Now, it's this could have opened in a standard, you know, insert book format, but it doesn't. Just the changing of the orientation is unique and something different. And I like this kind of tableau here. You've got basically, there she is in bed, apparently asleep. Um, this is a city here and this painting above her head. And then we have the sky here at night. And I, I, I sometimes think this must be what she's dreaming about. This is her, you know, her dreaming uh, in her sleep. Maybe. I could be wrong. But that's what I'm thinking it is. And uh, that's what's underneath the CD. She's an excellent guitarist. And um, that's her debut album. I talked about that album with Robert Kinsler on one of our old episodes of Music Worth Buying. Um, next, let's show a uh, packaging here by Kate Bush, an album entitled Signals. 
Uh, no, not signals, Arial, excuse me. And um, this one is a standard three-way uh, fold out here. But here's what's interesting now, in my opinion. Uh, you open it up. You've got, of course, this very nice artwork here. You open it up again, and the way the CDs sit in their respective pockets here, you pull them out, see here? There's the CD being pulled out. They match up with the artwork. I have seen other CD packaging do this before, sometimes with a single, sometimes like this one, a double CD, but it's very beautiful. It's just very beautiful to look at. And this is a great example of something you couldn't do on a vinyl record. This would just be too big, you know, to have the printing and everything in the pockets and all that, it just wouldn't work. This is something you could only do on a CD. And I think a lot of the examples I'm showing you here are, are true of that, that you just couldn't do these on a vinyl record. Here's another example of this as well. This is Red Letter Year by Ani DeFranco. And, uh, you know, nice artwork here. You open it up and you do have, of course, this beautiful illustration. You do have this very nice booklet here with lyrics. On the back, you have a picture. And here, we have a very interesting pocket design for the CD. Remember the cover here. You've got the crescent moon, but as you pull the CD out, the moon gets bigger. And this is just how this has been put together, where you've got the, the CD here with the moon printing on it. Put it back inside, and you've got a crescent moon. And I just thought that was a neat thing. Once again, it's a tiny little change in how you normally design the pocket for the CD, but just the fact that it's the moon and it's all black, it creates this illusion here when you first open up, when you first open it up and you see this crescent moon. So very cool. Just a little thing makes all the difference sometimes. Um, on that same note, here is one by Esperanza Spalding. Um, this is her album, Radio Music Society. And fantastic album, by the way. When you open it up, it does the following. So you've got two very strongly themed sides. You've got the exterior, and then you've got the interior. Now this little card here is a download card for some videos. Uh, the booklet is in here. The CD is in here, and we've got little pockets for them. A little hard to get out, I'll admit, but still beautiful to look at. Uh, very, very nice. And Esperanza Spalding, in case you don't remember, is the artist that uh, upset Justin Bieber fans when she won Best New Artist versus him. And anyways, though. So now we're going to look at two uh, formats that I have seen other artists do, but... Um, these are the best examples that I own in my collection. Um, first of all, this is Eddie Vedder's ukulele songs. By the way, ukulele, the instrument is, is a name that I have mispronounced for decades and decades. I pronounced it ukulele. And that's how I was taught to say it, actually. But I do find out now it's called ukulele, so I've been getting used to saying that here. Now, this is packaged in a hardcover book. And you open it up. Um, and you've got this amazing looking booklet here, uh, printed on very nice, beautiful paper with photos uh, and lyrics. And it's just gorgeous looking, uh, this book here. This is a handsome package. And one thing you may have noticed so far, as I'm showing this to you, I'm not showing you any anniversary reissues or anything of that nature. Because by their very nature, any anniversary reissue should have better than average to exceptional packaging. Because you're asking your fans to rebuy the same album again in most cases. So you better have, it's required, you know, that you have really strong packaging. No, this is just his release of this album in this nice little hardcover book here. And on the end here, you've got a pocket where the CD fits into. Beautiful, you know. And I've seen this now, of course, with... Uh, uh, some of those big, uh, like you've probably seen those, like those ones by the doors where, uh, and the one by Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young, where it's a big hardcover book and inside is the records and the CDs. There's usually a separate booklet for the text, but here we have a sewn in book or 
or Stapleton, I'm not sure. There it is. Beautiful. Um, on that same note, I haven't seen this too often. This is the only example I've seen. But here we have uh, an album by Elvis Costello and The Roots. Um, uh, Wise Up Ghost and Other Songs. And here on the back is the pocket for the CD. But what's unique, of course, is that it's all packaged inside of this paperback book. This paperback book features photos. It features an essay about the album and lyrics, of course. But yeah, I've not really seen this. Um, now, maybe other artists have done it. Please let us know in the comments. Um, but yeah, it's just inside of a little paperback book. And of course, it's much more fragile than the hardcover one, so I do try to take good care of it. Alice Costello and the Roots. Um, next, I got one here by Kiss. Now, what's unique about this one is, as you can see, this holographic cover. I haven't seen too many other artists do this. Even though this seems like it should be an easy way to set your album apart by doing this kind of packaging. Is this hypnotizing you? I figure if I do this long enough, it'll probably hypnotize you. No, maybe not. But at any rate, though, um, I think I know that Prince did one of these at one point. I don't have the actual album, but I, I heard read that he did one. But I haven't seen too many people just do a simple holographic cover. So that's why I'm bringing it up here on this special show. This is one of my favorites, one of my absolute favorites. Now, Beck, of course, is a favorite artist of mine, but this is some of the best CD album packaging I've ever seen. This is The Information by Beck, which as you look at it, of course, it's just blank, just this grid on it. And then you open it up and this came with a CD and DVD, and this is blank too, although there is some reading you can, it's not completely blank. It's hard to see the, uh, there's the lettering if I bring it close. Now, if you look inside here though, this is what you have. You have this, oh, here's the insert for the album, the CD. Once again, it's blank too. Just this grid on it. Um, but inside you have this sticker sheet. And the point of this is for you to design the CD package using these stickers. Place them anywhere you want. You know, put them on the little two, you know, four page fold out. Uh, put them on the back cover. You can snap these out, you know, put it on the side here. On the inside, underneath the CD. And this came with a CD and a DVD, as if the packaging wasn't fantastic enough. So you could put it also behind the CD as well. Put some artwork there too. I think this is wonderfully interactive and I'm surprised that more music artists haven't done this. Now we have two more I'm gonna talk about. This one is by Melissa Etheridge. And this is an album of hers, Fourth Street Feeling. Uh, a great album, which I reviewed on the Music Worth Buying show. Um, what you'll notice about this is just how much bigger it is from your average CD here. We'll just, you know, for a comparison here. It's just bigger. The size orientation is different. And it opens up like this. Opens up this uh, three ways here. And just the fact that it's bigger makes you perceive it differently. Uh, the CD fits in this pocket right here. And here is a, a booklet here. We'll take a look at this here. And very nicely done booklet. Printed on very nice paper. Lyrics, notes, photos. There was one other little item in here that I have to show you. It also has this big guitar pick. Though this is made out of cardboard, so this would not be practical to use playing. Also, the size of it would not make it practical even if it was plastic. But yeah, we've got a giant size guitar pick. So finally, I have one more to show you, and it's another real personal favorite. And this is Let Me Get By by the Tedeschi Trucks Band. Now, first of all, this is packaged in a box. And the box is made to look like a little Fender Tweed Amp. I used to own one of these little Fender Tweed Amps. And anyways, though, really cool looking. Even got a little handle on the top. But, um, uh, this is a box that you just open up like this. 
And then inside, here's what you got. First, you've got the album, Let Me Get By, which is a great album, by the way. And we've got a bonus album here of additional bonus tracks. And by the way, this was the deluxe edition of the release. There was a standard edition and a deluxe edition. Uh, and, and I'm going to circle back to that topic in just a moment here. But here's the disc of bonus tracks. There's this little wallet, uh, how do I say this here? Emergency wallet picks. Now, in case you're not a guitarist, you've probably never seen these before, but these are uh, common little accessories that guitarists can pick up. What these are, these are guitar picks that you punch out of this little card. This is a card you can fit inside your wallet so that if you're playing somewhere and you realize, oh shoot, I don't have any picks on me. You pull this out of your wallet and you're saved. These have little punch out temporary picks. They're called temporary because they're just made of cardboard, but they are plastic coated to give them some durability. That way they at least last you a gig. You can hopefully just get through your gig with, with at least one of these, or maybe you need two, I don't know. But this was a little accessory when I was a working professional musician. This was a little accessory that I always had in my wallet. Because in spite of my best efforts to always make sure I was prepared, every now and again something would just happen and I'd show up to a gig and I'm like, oh shoot, I don't have a pick. Ah, pull out your temporary pick card out of your wallet. Now you're saved, there you go. So yeah, uh, of course this is something that I would never use practically. I'm just gonna keep this like this and make it part of the, because it's part of the packaging. And then finally, we have a booklet here um, that we will just show you here. There's some gear and lyrics, credits, liner notes, photos, everything else. Tedeschi Trucks Band. And so, yeah, great booklet. Just a great package, you know. And like I said, this was just the deluxe edition of the, of the what was the standard release at the time. This is something, again, I wanted to get back to. I don't see this as much as I used to because CD sales, people just aren't buying CDs. So we're seeing less of this. Although we did see um, a nice version of this with Garbage's last album, where they did a, super, a deluxe, not a super deluxe, but a deluxe CD edition that had two CDs, had some extra goo guys with the packaging, was in unique and different packaging. And like I said, these can be, I guess the only downside is stuff like this, actually stuff like this, it's hard to get onto your CD shelf. I had to actually put it in like this. This luckily did fit onto the CD shelf with no problem because it's about the right size. But um, yeah, anyways though, so there we have it. Some examples of really unique, really exciting CD packaging. And of course, at the end of the day, it's how good is the music, I'm never gonna deny that, and so please, I know someone's gonna say that, but I already know this. Uh, all of these albums, I would not have gotten if I didn't think they were fantastic. And in fact, since they were fantastic, naturally, of course, I wanted to get the deluxe edition, which by the way, this was too, I should have mentioned that. This was a deluxe edition of the standard release too. Um, anyways, though, let me know what you think. Uh, what are some fantastic examples of CD packaging Outside of, of course, uh, some kind of deluxe or super deluxe reissue, but just standard releases. What, what are some outstanding uh, examples of packaging uh, that you uh, have in your collection that you've seen that you think is really cool? Please let us know in the comments. As always, if you like what I'm doing here, be sure to click like, click subscribe, and smash that bell notification icon so you can know when I release new videos. And everybody, I want to thank you so much for watching. I also want to thank my patron supporters who are helping me to make more videos. If you'd like to be a patron supporter, please go to patreon.com slash TJR the original. And if you can't be a patron supporter, please just click like, please just leave a comment. Please just share these videos on your social media. And otherwise though, I just want to say thank you very much for watching everybody. I really appreciate it. And I hope you all stay safe and healthy. Bye-bye.